Inflation? Blimey, it seems there's bad news around every turn with all your household bills going up. How can we possibly afford to go shooting? Don't panic. There are guns out there that won't break the bank. And yet, are real quality items to own and be proud of. and welcome to AAR On Air. Yes, this week it's a look at getting your hands on a quality gun that, whilst isn't real budget, low price, what do you expect for this money kind of gun, more a gun that will last you for years and years and has a fabulous feel and finish to it and won't cost you thousands. Far from it. This week it in this Jubilee year, I have a couple of rifles bearing our very own homegrown BSA name. The BSA Lightning XLSE and the BSA Lightning XLSE GRT. And dressed up in the real wood beach finish, they do look beautiful. First things first, what is the difference and what is GRT? Is it some kind of hormonal therapy? No! The first is the non-GRT, which has a steel spring on board to generate the power, whereas the GRT, or gas ram technology, ah, has a pressurised nitrogen-filled piston, meaning the action of cocking the gun is smoother, requiring the same pressure from the beginning to the end of the stroke. Then there is the vibration issue, which when firing the GRT is reduced as the ram runs effortlessly down the cylinder, meaning accuracy to target should be improved as the pellet exits the barrel at greater speed and more consistently. All sounds good, but does it actually make a difference? And how much more does it cost? All of which, will be answered as we go through the review. Firstly though, the stats and walk around. Well, externally there is pretty much no difference other than the engraving on the side of the stock of the GRT version. They are both 95 centimetres or 37 and a half inches long and tip the scales at around three kilograms or 6.6 .6 pounds and they carry that weight nice and close to the body, giving them weight for stability, but in the right place for balance. They are both available in 177 or a 22 caliber. The stock is a high quality ambidextrous beach item and is finished to a very high standard with no rough edges anywhere at all. From the front, there is a built-in silence and moderator, and my experience is these are often more for show than any real sound-reducing benefit. Not so with this lightning. It does make this really pretty quiet. And, not content with that, the end is removable and threaded to take a standard silencer as an add-on. With this being a fairly short rifle to start with, adding an additional silencer to the 37cm or 14.5 inch barrel doesn't make this overly long at all. But the benefits of the extra level of sound deadening are probably worth it, making this pretty much PCP quiet. One of the questions is likely to be, is the gas ram quieter than the spring version? The honest answer has to be, it's more of a tonal change rather than a volume thing. Cocking the gun does require a little effort, but the smoothness of the action does make it easier. I was very interested to see if the GRT was more consistent or smoother in action than the spring version. And the answer is, yes it is. But in all fairness, the spring version is ultra smooth. And if you didn't have the two side by side, you would be very happy with the standard spring version. With them side by side, yes, you get it. 
you get what BSA have tried and succeeded in achieving. No open sights on either of these, you will need a scope. And I would suggest a pretty reasonable one, just to add to that quality feel. But if budget is an issue, then there are still high quality items out there that won't break the bank. Both of these come pre-fitted with a maxi grip scope rail to give a more secure fitting and stable platform for your scope. The safety is on the right hand side and is very smooth in action with forward for fire and back for safe. It doesn't automatically engage each time you cock the gun. Some people will like that and others maybe not so much. Personally, I do like the idea of being in control of the safety and more often than not, you forget auto safeties and try to take the shot only to find the trigger is locked. Not a bad thing, just a personal preference thing. That stock is stippled for grip in all the right places, making this quite suitable for a spot of pest control as well as target work. The traditional shape is comfortable and yet also somewhat ergonomic with the slight bulge to the forestock. There is a cutaway to give a thumbs up as well as thumbs down shooting option. Out to the very rear is a recoil pad to add to the comfort. Then there's the trigger which is very comfortable. It is a two stage item and a light first stage and then a smooth relatively short second stage which is a pleasure to use. This really does have a quality feel to it. What about power output then? Well, time to get both of them over the chronograph with a selection of pellets to find if there are any significant differences between the two. The spring version first. Using BSA Gold Star's 8.64 grain 177 pellets, it saw 750 feet per second, which is 10.79 foot pounds or 14.64 joules. Using the heavier Black Star's, at 10.49 grain, it saw 662 feet per second, which is 10.21 foot pounds or 13.84 joules. And finally, I fed it the H&N Barracuda Greens, weighing 6.64 grains, and it saw a whopping 862 feet per second, which is 10.96 foot pounds or 14.86 joules. Pretty high feet per second figures from the alloys, which I suppose was to be expected. Then it was the turn of the GRT version. Again, using the BSA Gold Stars 8.64 grain, it saw a slightly higher 751 feet per second, which is 10.82 foot pounds or 14.67 joules. With the Black Stars 10.49s on board, it saw 683 feet per second, which is 10.87 foot pounds or 14.74 joules and finally the 6.64 alloys saw 879 feet per second which is 11.39 foot pounds or 15.45 joules all of which proves that the GRT is capable of kicking out those slightly higher figures and that either of them are happy with the alloy alternative now, without a doubt, some of you guys out there will be getting ready to type that the power levels are possibly a little low, and no doubt others will be saying they understand why it may appear that way. You see, the thing is with Springer type guns, not only is it related to the size of the cylinder, but more importantly, the more these get used, the more power will slowly creep itself up closer to the 12 foot pound UK limit. So there is already an element of protection built in by the responsible guys at BSA. Both of these guns are brand new out of the box and will benefit from some out in the field or out on the range mileage as it were to bed them in nicely. Time to get a scope on them and out on the range. I'm actually looking forward to this part which for me with a Springer is unusual. 
Blimey, am I becoming a convert? I wanted to fit a good quality scope to give them a good chance, but I also wanted it to be a reasonable price. Both of these reasons will match the quality and the value of the rifles. So, a Hugo 3 to 12 by 44 scope was fitted, really good quality at a more budget price of around £100 UK. I think 35 metres should do it. If it comes to having a bad day, the first thing you need to do, and I'm having a bit of a bad day today, I've just been testing a different gun, I can't seem to get it to group, uh, don't know that it's me, don't know what's the matter. So, go back in, get yourself a coffee. Yeah, nice hot coffee. Have a minute, come back. Now, at this point, I normally go and get my BSA R 10th. Well, I'm not going to do that today. Don't know why, just don't feel like it. <laughs> what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to see if another BSA can restore my faith in my abilities. A Springer as well, so that's probably not the best of moves for me, but it's not really a Springer, actually. It's the GRT, the Gas Ram Technology BSA, Lightning, XL, SE, and as many other initials as you can put at the end of it. It does feel like a really quality piece of kit. It's not overly expensive. So I've put on a Hugo 3 to 12 by 44 scope on it. The reason I've put a shorter one on is because the cylinder on this is actually quite small. And is the barrel, the overall gun is. It's nice, it's compact, it's beautifully made. So I wanted to put not a budget scope, but a non-expensive scope. I'm trying to keep the whole package reasonable. High quality, reasonable money. We're all suffering at the moment with this uh, e economic situation, should I say. Huh. So, let's see if I can hit anything with it. I've been having a really bad day. Let's see if this can now put a smile back on my face. Here goes. <laughs> so what you've got there is AAR on a bad day we all get them loaded up with caffeine to help a few tweaks as I've gone along settling down now that grouping come on on a good day, settle down properly, practised. This is going to be one heck of a piece of kit. It's nice. It's beautifully made. It's not a lot of money considering. I'd put this up there with some seriously more expensive brake barrels and or under lever, side levers. They're all in that category. It's nice. It's comfortable. The trigger is not heavy. It's heavier than I'm used to on the PCPs. Uh, scope choice has got to be pretty important so that you're not getting in the way of the brake action on the barrel. It's gas ram technology. It's nice. It's really well made. And it's just typical of BSA to be the one to put a smile back on my face. It really is. It's, it's nice. Yeah, I can, I can see a, a, a justifiable reason for having one of these in your collection, even if you're a PCP shooter. Yeah. You're not overspending on it. Really nice. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to have a bit of a go at some paintballs. Yeah, I'm feeling brave. Feeling a bit cocky even, I suppose. So, paintballs down there. Let's give them a go, shall we? Oh! <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it all day. You, you won't hear any complaints from me about that one. What we'll do now is we'll go and get the Springer version of it, because this, as I say, is the gas ram one. Get Springer version, put the scope on that one, see what the difference is. Well, we've shot the GRT Lightning XL SE, the gas ram technology on that one. Now on to the Springer version. This is purely a steel spring. It's slightly cheaper. The build quality is no different. The action, as far as breaking the barrel is concerned, is still very smooth. Not quite as smooth as the GRT, but still punching above its weight, shall we say, as far as its price. Down at the same range, same scope, approximately zeroed in. I've not spent a lot of time. Let's see how it fares. It's capable, it's nice to use, it feels nice, it's quality, and it's quiet. And it's even quieter if you put a silencer on the end as well, as the one it's already got. Yeah, really nice, enjoyed, enjoyed both of them. Back to the studio. I can honestly say I enjoyed that. They are smooth, they feel really nice to shoot, consistent and accurate. I don't doubt there are Springer shooters out there that will do much better than me, but I am pleased with the results. And above all else, I enjoyed it. So, what is the difference in price then? Well, looking at others in the marketplace, the quality of these, to my mind, is in the £500 plus price range, in terms of quality alone. Well, the GRT will cost you under £350 UK and the spring or non-GRT version will save you around £30 at under £320 UK. Which should you go for? Well, that is entirely down to your personal budget restrictions and preferences. Either are very, very capable and great fun to use. If you have the extra £30 then go for the slightly smoother GRT. But if you don't have the extra, I assure you, you won't be disappointed in any way with the standard version. It's a bit like comparing butters. They are both silky smooth, but you may have a personal preference. But neither of these BSAs are margarine or butter wannabes. Don't forget, of course, you don't need all the PCP add-ons such as tanks, pumps, etc. Yes, you will need a scope, but after that, just a tin of pellets and you're away. I've enjoyed these two and with guns of this quality and at this price, I may well add a brake barrel into the AAR collection. Just in case I find myself with an empty tank. Or maybe just because it adds another level to shooting. Whichever excuse, I think I can really get away with, really. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one too. If so, please give us the old thumbs up, subscribe, hit the old alarm bell. Don't forget to visit the AAR News Channel and subscribe when you're there. There are all these forums and platforms to continue the chat. There is the AAR website for merch, etc. There are the brand new AAR Velcro patches that Mrs. AR has sourced. And to be fair, they're really nice. A big thank you to Vector Air, as always, for getting hold of these two for me to review. And to the guys and girls at BSA for making such a nice job of these two and being really helpful in making sure we got these at short notice. Thank you, guys. Well, that's it from me. It just leaves me to say a big thank you to you guys for your support and positive comments. 
I did get a bit of a dig from someone the other day who was annoyed that I hadn't personally sorted his query on a specific issue on a gun he had purchased from somewhere. Sadly, with around one to two million hits on the channel each month and all the comments that go with those hits, it is pretty impossible for me to answer all the comments and questions. And at times like that, I wish I had a time turner to be able to slow time down. Sadly, I don't, and I can only apologise if I don't answer everyone's questions and comments. But the forums, such as Airgun Factory, have guys on there with loads of experience and knowledge, and they are more than happy to help if indeed I am unable to get through all the comments. That's it. Stay safe and shoot safe. And hopefully I'll see you next week with some more great stuff being reviewed. Bye for now.